All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of a multi-part troubleshooting and setup tutorial, uh, trying to walk through beginners through uh, setting up your phone and making sure that App Inventor and your phone are in communication and what to do if you run across any difficulties. The first thing we want to make sure of is that we have Java installed um, and that Java is um, functioning. A quick way, an easy way to test that is to go to java.com and then um, click the do I have Java link right here. When you click uh, do I have Java, you can click verify the Java version. It says detecting Java on your computer. It says you have the recommended Java installed version. Um, if you don't have it then, you will be uh, taking to the Java downloads where you can download and um, install Java. So if for some reason you didn't have Java, then we're going to find the Java version that refers to your system. We see here uh, that Windows 7 XP Vista 2000, 2003, 2008 install uh, right here. This is the easiest install to do. This is the uh, online install. Um, click that and it's going to, I'm in Chrome, and you can see that this downloads uh, right here at the bottom of the screen. It's going to attempt to download this uh, program. So I can uh, save that download. If you're using Internet Explorer and you click on that download, then you will see um, it looks a little bit different when you click that link. And you get asked if you want to run or save the file. If we click run, then that file is going to download and start. That's the easiest way to run the Java install. If you're using Internet Explorer, it gives you that option to run. Chrome is always going to just download that file, and then you'll need to select it uh, and run it. So going back to Chrome, let's minimize this. Going back to Chrome, you'll see that it finished the download here. I could select the little drop down. Uh, and click open that and it's then going to ask me if I want to run the file which will then achieve the same results as what we see here with uh, the file download then saying hey do you want to run this uh, and then you would click run I'm not going to run it I already have Java installed so at that point um, we would want to go back uh, to java.com and test and see if um, Java is installed as far as the Java tester team would say. So we click on the do I have Java, verify the Java version, and then it's going to crank through and detect if you have Java at that point. Both of the tests we're going to do now is available from the uh, appinventor.googlelabs.com learn section. So in other words, if you go to uh, appinventor.googlelabs.com slash about, you're going to click on this learn right here. When you click that learn, then you get getting started, the tutorials, etc. Now you're going to click on that getting started, and then this first link, link, setting up your phone and computer, will be where we can access these two important tests for setting up your computer and getting it ready to run App Inventor. The first is the Java test page. If you click the Java test page, you'll see that uh, we get this little Java applet. It's an in-browser applet running. It says your Java is working, the latest Java is installed, and gives you a um, version report on that. The other um, important one, and this one probably is the most important, is the Java Web Start demo. I'm going to click that, and here are some demos um, that we can check to make sure the Web Start actually works. Now, Web Start is where um, a Java program doesn't run in the browser but starts from the browser and so uh, that's what we're going to test right here and we'll just click this first one this draw now you'll see that I have my browser set up so that it automatically starts downloading um, and runs it it's quite possible that your browser doesn't behave in this way that instead 
um, it just downloads that file. It could even just ask you where you want it, where it wants you to download it. So let's look at where the settings in Chrome are to set up that behavior. In Chrome, if you go to Options, and then you scroll over here to Under the Hood, down, you see here, Downloads. If you have this button checked, ask where to save each file before downloading. Watch what the behavior is when I click that draw. It asks me where I want to save this draw.jnlp. You'll also see a behavior that's going to be true about App Inventor here, and that is that because I open draw once, there's already a draw.jnlp, and you'll see that it incremented the name so that it can start that file. So if I tell it um, to just go ahead and save it, um, then it's going to run it because I have told it to automatically run JNLP files. So now we have it here. So that's one kind of behavior you can have. Let's go back to those settings. Scroll down to downloads. Here's the other thing. You have chosen to open certain file types automatically after downloading. You can clear these settings so the downloaded files don't open automatically. So I'm going to clear that to show you what it looks like if your browser is not set up to automatically open the uh, Java Web Start, the JNLP files. So I'm going to clear those auto open settings. Click close. Now when I click draw, you saw that it downloaded it. Right here at the bottom of Chrome you see draw2.jnlp, but hey, I don't have draw anywhere. It's the exact behavior you will see with the blocks editor if you do not have the JNLPs to auto start. With Chrome, you can click on that drop down to the right of the download and click always open files of this type. Once I've done that, then when I click a JNLP file, you saw the arrow indicating that I'm downloading it and it auto opens. So there are two basic behaviors that you need to control with any browser. You need to control whether or not every time you start to download something, it asks you where to save each file. You also will need to know, perhaps for troubleshooting, where by default your browser downloads files to. In this case, it downloads them to my user directory um, slash downloads. So a folder called downloads under my user directory. This would be an important path for later troubleshooting those JNLP files. You also need to control the auto opening, whether or not a browser will automatically open a certain file type. And next let's look at how Internet Explorer controls those settings. By default, Internet Explorer will, in fact, uh, be set up to automatically run the JNLPs. It's fairly straightforward. If for some reason you're getting uh, an issue with the JNLPs not starting, you're going to have to locate where the uh, JNLPs are being downloaded to and run them manually. I'll show you that you can do that. I'm going to right-click. I'm in Internet Explorer. I'm going to right-click a, a uh, web start. You click um, save the target as, and you see that I've moved the draw JLP. I'm going to save it right to the desktop and click save. I see the file download completed. Um, I'm going to find that right on my desktop. Here's the draw JLP. If I double click that, it's going to fire off the Java uh, engine and fire that. Now, typically speaking, Internet Explorer version 7 and 8 should fire off JLP files with no problem. So your blocks editor should be starting fine with Internet Explorer. If it's not, um, then go test um, at java.com the way we just did uh, to see if you can fire off any JLP. The other option is to save it manually and see if you can fire it. There are a few issues with some setups that require changing the heap settings in the JLP file. It's a very advanced troubleshooting step uh, we won't worry about that for the purposes of this tutorial. So to recap just a little bit, um, with Internet Explorer, uh, by default, Web Start 
JNLP files should start automatically. Um, with uh, Chrome, you have to do a little bit of tweaking to set up so that um, the JNLP files are downloaded and ran. Now, with Chrome, whatever your default download directory is, you're going to get a backlog of JNLP files. There's a couple ways you can handle that. I'm going to go to uh, my download directory. As you recall, I was under JW Tyler, Downloads. And what you'll see here are those draw JNLPs um, from that test we just did. Probably, if I scroll down here a little bit, you'll see some JNLPs from the blocks editor as well. I don't see too many Java things. But those JNLPs, oh, I know I don't see them. I have a um, batch file set up to delete the JNLP files. In fact, um, as soon as I log off this computer and log back on, that batch file will delete all JNLP files from this directory, which is one way you can control the um, JNLP files showing up all the time. Once we know that Java is set up correctly in our computer, and we can run the web start Java programs, then it's time to install the App Inventor Extras. The App Inventor Extras allow us to have a connection between our phone and our computer using the ADB bridge. Also gives us an emulator if we don't want to use the phone or we don't have our phone. So once again, we're going to go to appinventor.googlelabs.com. Now we're going to click the Learn button. So here's Learn. That takes us to uh, documentation and uh, reference for our app inventor. Then we're going to click on that Getting Started link. And we're going to click up Setting Up Your Phone and Computer. This is part of setting up your computer. We did this part, testing your Java configuration. Uh, we downloaded Java. We made sure Java would work. Next is installing the App Inventor Extras software. So if we have Mac OS X, we would click this link. If we have Linux or uh, some other POSIX compliant operating system, we would click that link. If we have Windows, we're going to click the instructions for Windows. Now, first thing we need to do is download the installer software. That's the first step right here. We will click the download the installer. Once again, I'm using Chrome, so at the bottom of the page here, you see it asks me if I want to save this. So I'm going to save it. It's going to save it to my default download directory. You see it's about 60 megabyte file, so it could take a little bit to download. If you're uh, using Internet Explorer, let's look at what would happen. Let's open Internet Explorer. And if we click that installer software, the pop-up comes up in the middle of the screen, asking us to save that somewhere. When we click save, then we can specify where it's downloaded. And I'm going to click at downloads. And say save it there. It's going to say, hey, one already exists. Because we're downloading it from the other window. So I'm going to say, no, I don't want to replace it. Because uh, we're already getting 